Webs We Weave podcast. I am your host, Ryan McKern. Sit back and dwell in the darkness, mon ami. And thank you for joining me in the wicked webs we weave. Gather round the verbal fire and join me in one of New Orleans' most notorious of restaurants. While exploring the French Quarter, you might come across an eye-catching salmon pink colored building. The distinctive appearance of the property isn't a coincidence. This building belongs to Brennan's, a popular New Orleans restaurant. Brennan's offers unique, innovative, yet classic New Orleans cuisine. The restaurant balances the traditional and the modern, much like it balances the worlds of the living and the deceased. Like many places in the Crescent City, Brennan's is haunted unlike most haunted sites in the city. However, the restaurant isn't haunted only by angry, vengeful, or tragic ghouls. In addition to at least one creepy spirit, peaceful, helpful presences also call the restaurant home. The History of Reddins Crosses three centuries of life, New Orleans has enjoyed several cultural identities. Mainly, though, the city has been associated with the French and the Spanish perhaps because of the association. Owen Edward Brennan, the patriarch of the Brennan family, was mocked for his Irish heritage. Count Arnaud, a New Orleans restaurateur, once told Brennan that an Irishman's culinary skills end with boiled potatoes. Brennan knew he had to prove Arnaud, and that stereotype was wrong. In 1946, he did just that. He opened Owen Brennan's Vucare Restaurant on Bourbon Street. Brennan's Vucare Restaurant was where the famous New Orleans dessert, Bananas Foster, was invented by Chef Paul Blanche. Another local tradition started at this restaurant was breakfast at Brennan's, which showcases one of the largest breakfast menus in the city. Following Owen and Brennan's passing in 1956, the restaurant moved to its present location on Royal Street. The pink building on Royal was constructed in 1795 by Vincent Rallou, grandfather of the renowned artist Edgar Degas. The building has also been the site of the Louisiana State Bank and a home to President Andrew Jackson. In 2013, the building underwent a major restoration, unearthing, among other things, a hidden door. The Brennan Family The Irish-American Brennan family has established a number of respected New Orleans restaurants. In total, the extended Brennan family operates ten restaurants in New Orleans, with seven in or near the French Quarter. By the 1970s, the Brennans owned Commander's Palace, another beloved Big Easy Dining Institution. Remarkably, noted New Orleans cuisine chefs Emerald Lagasse and Paul Pruholm's careers both took off from their time spent at Commander's Palace. Other restaurants under the Brennans' ownership include Ralph's on the Park, Cafe Noma, in the New Orleans Museum of Art and Napoleon House all in or near New Orleans. The Ghost of Chef Paul Blanche During the career of Brennan's, Chef Paul Blanche shaped the restaurant's menus. His most notable contribution was the dessert Bananas Foster, named after Richard Foster, a friend of Owen. Brennan's Blanche created the dish in 1951 
and remains the most ordered item at the restaurant to this day. The original Benaz Foster has also inspired a host of other versions of the dessert, including pastries, candies, and drinks. Chef Brown's culinary creativity and devotion made him an admired chef. The chef was dedicated to his work to the very end. After his death, he was even buried with a Brennan's menu, knife, and fork across his chest. According to food and wine, Blanche's loyalty extends beyond his death. Restaurant chef says the chef never leaves the kitchen. Despite his death in 1977, every night, Blanche's ghost signals to the end of the night shift by banging pots and pans in an almost celebratory manner. This nightly noise is unlikely to be the work of a prankster in the kitchen, as the sound is heard while the restaurant doors are being locked from the outside. For those seeking to spot the chef's ghost, he can sometimes be seen in the dining rooms or by the front door. Your best chance of summoning him, however, is by ordering bananas foster, his signature dish. While the bananas are flame at your table, around for the chef's turbaned ghost. Translucent in nature, his ghost sometimes appears in other forms, like a brief sparkle or a heat wave like distortion of a man in a chef's hat. The ghost of Herman Funk. Chef Blanche is not the only eternally faithful member of Brennan's staff. In his life, Herman Funk was a sommelier who helps from the restaurant's extraordinary selection of wine and spirits. Now, Funk lives on the wine cellar. His ghost helps waitstaff decide on the wine suggestions and bearings. To indicate his picks, Funk's ghost clinks his preferred bottles. It is common for spirits to linger in places that are important to them in their lives. Unfortunately, this importance is all too often because of abuse, trauma, or tragedy that once occurred in those places. For the ghosts of Paul Blanche and Herman Funk to be so friendly and continue to, in their own way, work at Brennan's, the restaurant must truly be special to them. Red Room and Monsieur Lefleur. Unlike the upbeat gourmand ghosts of the kitchen and wine cellar, Brennan's has been home to at least one more traditional specter. The spirit has dwelled in the Red Room. The Red Room is undoubtedly the darkest and most haunted part of Brennan's. Its blood red walls sunk much horror. According to the 18th century legend, one faithful morning, on shore the floor, calmly planned the three funerals. Later that day, he came home. He killed his wife and his son. He then killed himself by hanging himself from the chandelier in the center of the Red Room. Prior to the restaurant's 2013-2014 renovations, painted portraits of Lafleur were on the room's walls. This room was a site of eerie phenomenon. For instance, no matter the time of day or the weather conditions outside, restaurant guests could feel a cold spot over the fireplace with their bare hands. The cold spot didn't just feel chilly, but as cold as reaching into a freezer. On the walls, the portrait of Monsieur Lefleur appeared to change its expression. You could look away from the portrait one moment and look back the next to see a slightly different expression. Namely, the floor's smile shifted to a grimace. Per the account of paranormal investigator Fiona Broom, and I quote, As I watched Monsieur the floor's face seem to change from pose to vulnerable, or perhaps younger, and then a troubled grimace tightened his lips, it turned slightly sneering, slightly distasteful. Finally, he looked anguished. 
or perhaps angry, even sinister, end quote. The ghost of Monsieur Lafleur has also been witnessed per investigator Broom as a shadowy figure, about five and a half feet tall and somewhat portly. The ghost disappeared whenever direct eye contact was made. After the restaurant's renovations, the second floor dining room seems to have been changed significantly. It is apparently now known as the Morphy Room, in honor of chess prodigy Paul Morphy, a former resident of the property. The former Red Room seems to have been broken up into small parlor and dining area, as opposed to the larger dining room it used to be. The room has also been redecorated, noticeably. Monsieur Lefort's portrait has been removed from its former position directly above the fireplace. Lefort's portrait was replaced by a portrait of Paul Morphy. A fireplace and chandelier are still present. Whether or not the Morphy room's fireplace and chandelier are the same as before is unclear. However, it is entirely possible that, even though their appearance is superficially changed, the fireplace and chandelier are still the same as much. They likely carry the same paranormally charged energy. Perhaps the redecoration of the red room was to update the room for a more modern look. Or perhaps owners of Brennan's were trying to drive out the floor's unsettling spirit, moving the portrait, refinishing the fireplace, covering the walls. These design choices coincide with the most paranormally active parts of the room. It is presently unknown if LaFleur's ghost still actively haunts the restaurant. But usually, the stronger a spirit was in its convictions and in its life, the stronger that spirit is after death. Given the atrocity that LaFleur was able to commit against his own family, it's quite likely that his spirit persists in Brennan's despite the renovations. Brennan's restaurant reputation as both an esteemed and haunted restaurant precedes it. On the culinary side, the restaurant is considered one of the best in New Orleans and a must-try for visitors. On the paranormal side, Brennan's ghoulish reputation is well known. It was even featured on an episode of the television series Ghost Hunters. If you'd like to learn more about the ghostly side of the restaurant and see it for yourself, consider joining us on the New Orleans Ghost Tour. Visit Brennan's.com and special guests and thanks to NewOrleansGhost.com for research on this episode. And that will do it for another episode, my friends. Once again, I am your host, Ryan McKern. This has been the Wicked Webs We Weave podcast. And until next time, au revoir.